So welcome back students. So we are pro now going to have the concluding lecture for this second module. So inorganic chemicals industries part 1. So we have seen the uh, how we are can classify both methane as well as coal. So methane means natural gas we have gasified and formed syn gas. Similar uh, observation we also obtained for coal. So in the initial part of the coal lecture we saw the gasification reaction and the last lecture we actually saw what are the different types of gasifier present. Now what are the gasifiers in this lecture are patented and now used. We have seen the type of gasifier whether it is fluidized bed, entrained bed, moving bed. But now most of the cases we have the entrained bed as in the industry which has been preferred. So will this lecture we will decide on the entrained bed and then finally we will tell discuss upon the integrated gas integrated coal gasification cycle that is actually the integrated coal gasification combined cycle. So we start with the gasification technology and its application. So we will see what are the recent gasification technologies then the applications. Now the gasification technology if I want to say what are the companies who are actually I mean designing this gasifier. So you must be knowing some of the companies like Shell is one of the company then you have the Conocophilix Philips. COP as one of the company, then a Mitsubishi Heavy Industries, MHI is one of the company which does this and GE, General Electrics is other company. So more or less we will focus on these four gasifiers. Then how to use them in the integrated gasification combined cycle is also called as IGCC. So it means what are you doing? In this you are gasifying the coal and then producing syngas and also power. That is why it is combined cycle you are producing syngas as well as power. So you are using the syngas to generate power. So let us see the shell part, the shell gasification cycle. In the shell gasification cycle, it is actually there are these gasifiers depend upon how you are introducing the feed. If you are introducing the feed as a dry feed, then it is one part is there that you have to provide more oxygen in order to combust them. Then there is another type of gasifier which is where you insert the reactant or that is the coal as a coal sludgy. So we will see all those gasifiers. So more or less all the gasifiers which I am not discussing shall be entrained flow gasifier. So the gasifier is something like this. So it is a single stage process. So what you have is, so if I want to draw it, the so Luff schematic. So this is the gasifier heart of the process. So this is the gasifier, this is the exit portion of the gasifier. Okay. So now you have the coal coming in here and along with that you are adding oxygen. So you want to gasify the coal, so you are sending oxygen to for combustion to occur. So now what it is happening is you have to save this particular wall. So this wall may be, you know, this wall if I am to drawing it correctly, so this wall it will extend throughout the gasifier. Why? Because it will save it from the harsh environment of the gases, okay, the internals. So these are either it can be a refractory type of material or in this case it is a membrane wall. So this is, if I want to write, it is a membrane wall. Okay. So, I will just discuss what is membrane wall. So, obviously what you do is here you have inserting the boiler feed water BFW. So, combustion occurs, you have the slack coming out at the bottom, okay. you have the slack coming out of the bottom. Then uh, you have uh, you have the generating the medium pressure steam. So, I will write here MP steam because of the heat generated from the gasifier you are producing medium pressure steam. Okay. So, once this reaction is occurring, so you need to send this medium pressure steam to the where you can extract the heat. So the cooler, so, so this actually will cool this gas, so medium pressure sent is here, it will cool the gas. So I mean when it is 
So it means that uh, your boiler feed water, the temperature here is low, the boiler feed water enters, gets the heat of reaction from the gasifier, becomes medium pressure steam and this medium pressure steam then further is heated by the medium pressure steam coming from the gasifier to provide high pressure steam, so HP steam, I write here HP high pressure steam. Okay. Now what happens? Remaining is you have the gases which you sent for cleaning, the gas cleaning, gas cleaning. You send it for the gas cleaning. So in the gas cleaning, finally you are getting here syngas. So you take the part of syngas here, syngas and what you do remaining gases you can again compress. You compress it and send it as a quench gas to the gasifier. So you have a quench gas coming out here, you take it down right here and add it here as a quench gas so as to control the temperature within the gasifier. Okay. So you have two things, one is you have a unit for producing high pressure steam and then you have a unit where gasification occurs and slag is. So here you have a dry feed, so you are feeding a reactant in dry nature that is coal and oxygen for combustion, so you are gasifying it. So now this membrane wall is very unique, so what in the membrane wall what happens is uh, there is a tube, high pressure tubes, this membrane wall if I want to draw this, I mean if I want to draw it here. So it is a high pressure tube, so here you have a tube, let us say this is a tube surface. Okay. So what happens, this is a tube surface, so here you have the boiler feed material coming out, boiler feed water going up through this membrane module, membrane tube, high pressure tubes. So what happens, they will be already preformed a solidified slag which will form prior as the reaction goes, a solidified slag will already form when the temperature is low. So what it does is, it avoids the liquid slag. The liquid slag will be just outside if I want to draw here, this is the liquid slag. It avoids the direct contact of the liquid slag with the membrane wall because of this solidified slag here, solidified slag in the initial part of the solidified slag. Because of the solidified slag, it actually protects the reactor internals. Okay, That is why this membrane wall is used in order to so it is the gasification chamber this this side, so this is the membrane wall and these I am just showing the membrane, uh, this is the tube where boiler feed water is sent here and steam is generated out here. So this is the membrane wall which has been adopted by Shell. So there are some issue, what is it, uh, you, it has uh, like the outlet temperature in this case is, outlet temperature is close to here, it will be around 1600 Kelvin okay. and the pressure will be around 30 bar. 30 bar and the cold gas efficiency is an important criteria, cold gas efficiency will be 80 to 83 percent, okay. 80 to 83 percent, fine. So this is adopted by Shell, so this is for dry feed, now if I write down it will be dry feed and I will say it is a single stage. So now let us move to the other gasifier. Now GE has also defined an entrain gasifier. In the GE entrain gasifier, it is having again a single stage, but here what it is, I will just draw the schematic briefly. You have the gasifier like before. So this is the entry, the entry is from the top, so your oxygen is coming from the top instead of bottom and you are sending the feed in terms of wet basis, so a cold slurry will be sent. Now the issue is when you have a cold slurry, it means you have water in it, so the gasifier spends the amount of energy or heat in order to gasify this 
water. So it means your cold efficiency will be lower as compared to the shell one. So that is what it is happening. So you have a refract. Now here instead of membrane wall, you have a refractory wall. So it goes here. So the, the region which is annular in between these is called the refractory wall and then you have this is coming out. The portion here this is called as the refractory wall. So now there are two issues, refractory wall is good but problem is because of the harsh condition you may have to replace this lining refractory wall. So you need to have an additional gasifier, it goes well for 6 or 9 months then you have to replace this gasifier refractory wall. But that is not true with the membrane module, membrane module you can use it because as I told you already a solidified slag is present on the surface of the gasifier which prevents the liquid slag to come in contact. So the membrane module is good in that way but in, a, in terms it is expensive as compared to this refractory wall. So now you have the slag coming out, the liquid slag and water slurry. slag and water slurry. So this is you quench it with the slag quench water. So here it is sent from the top, in the shell it was sent from the bottom and it was liquid. So this is again uh, then what you have is you have the gas coming out here, so gas is coming out here, you take this gas out and send it to a gas cleaning like previously. glass cleaning, you get syngas coming out, syngas coming out. So these are the refractory wall, this is also the refractory wall, so the annular portion. So now what you have is uh, this is if I want to write this, this is as the water quench reactor, water quench or chamber you can write, water quench chamber, okay. This is the syngas. The only issue with syngas is you have a slurry, the feed is usually a slurry, feed here is a slurry which is only having 60 to 70 percent of coal, rest remaining water. So you are spending some amount in evaporating the liquid water. Then uh, you have the outlet temperature, if I want to compare the outlet temperature, outlet temperature is quite similar around 1500 to 1800 Kelvin and the pressure is pretty high as compared to shell, pressure is around 30 to 80 bar is varies and the cold gas efficiency, this is important, the cold gas efficiency is it will be lower than the shell one, so it is around 69 to 77 percent because of the reasons I just now mentioned. So these are all single stage, both GE and shell are of single stage, okay, these are the entering gasifier. Okay, then let us move on and see what does the Conoco Phillips entrant gasifier looks like for the schematic. Now the next two I will discussing the two stage. So what is the two stage one? Just let me draw the schematic. So in this what you have is, you have a gasifier like this. So you have the gasifier, so it means your uh, inlet, the coal slurry is kept here, you are adding the coal slurry, I mean in both sides the coal slurry will be entering, again it is wet, coal slurry and oxygen, you are adding both coal slurry and oxygen, here also you are adding oxygen and coal slurry, okay. So you have uh, one single stage here, a single stage and then this is actually the single stage means one of the stage and the other stage is here. I mean if you want to draw it like this, it goes the ash slurry water content or the 
slurry and the water whichever is coming down from the bottom liquid. So, this is your first stage. So, this reaction occurs in the first stage here. So, I mean if I want to make it like this. So, this is your first stage of the reaction the second stage. The only issue is you do not provide additional oxygen in the second stage. So, you only provide the feed in the second stage. So, here I will be adding the coal slurry in the second stage. So, this is the second stage you are add again adding the feed as coal slurry in the second stage. So, this is the first stage and second stage. So, most of the reactions occur here then again because of the generation of the steam the remaining reaction takes place in the second stage. So, you then take out the effluent gases, cool it, you cool these gases, then send it to a gas cleaning as before. You get syngas here outside. Okay. So, this is the way they develop it. So, the important points to remember here is it is only 50 to 70 percent of wet, wet percent of coal in the coal slurry. In this coal slurry, you will have only 50 to 70 percent of coal and again the walls, these are the walls, these are the walls, these walls are refractory in nature. Okay, this is a refractory nature. So, cold gas efficiency again is around uh, 70 to 80 percent. Okay. And uh, outlet temperature will be very less here. Outlet temperature will be very less here. Okay. So, it is the difference between these two is just uh, this is again the slack quench reactor. or chamber I would say not reactor chamber. So, in the first stage you are doing combustion reaction in the second stage you do not require any oxygen. So, whatever heat you have you can have the gasification reaction further in the second stage. Okay. So, that is the way you get syngas from the top you clean the syngas. So, you are the this is the way that Conoco Phillips has adopted the process. Now, let us look at the last the final one. So, in the MHI that is the if I want to classify the Mitsubishi heavy industries the MHI. So, what it is you again have a similar construction like the COP the Conoco Phillips. So, in here you have a similar construction simi in nature you have a big column like before. Now, you take out the slag at the bottom but here you are providing dry feed. The only difference between the previous one and this is it is a dry feed. So, you can provide either air or oxygen both. So, again if I want to it is a you have one of the stages here. Then second stage is here. Okay. This is second stage. So, in between again uh, it will be instead of refractory it will have a membrane module. So, here it is again membrane module. So, membrane module will be present in the both the shell and Mitsubishi one membrane module okay, or membrane wall whatever you can say. So, again this is your first stage, first stage and this is your second stage. So, again in the same thing you are not providing additional oxygen. So, you are only providing a feed in the second stage coal. So, you are not providing all the coal at the first stage that is the way they go about. So, this is again the slack quench slack quench water chamber. Now, what you do with it with the gases which are coming out you actually uh, cool them. So, you add a boiler feed water here.
you add BFW that is boiler feed water. So, it is hot So, this will be uh, heated up and you produce high pressure steam, HP steam here, okay, high pressure steam. What to do with the letter, so once you enter this, what to do with the remaining gases, you remaining gases, go for again gas cleaning, for glass cleaning, so you will get syngas at the end, okay. Now, coal gas efficiency, if I want to write down the coal gas efficiency is around, let us say it is around 70 to 75 percent, near about 75 percent and the pressure is greater than 25 bar, bar okay. and your outlet temperature, it is still in the research stage, it is not really adopted by the industry, so it is yet to be adopted. So, it is going in research stage, not much information is known about the Mitsubishi entrant gasifier. So, this was all about the gasifier. So, you have uh, the types based on first two stage or single stage, then you can divide them based on what is the internal, whether it is refractory or membrane or you can also differentiate based on the reactant feed, whether it is a wet slurry or it is a dry slurry. So, these are the way the adopted different designs. So, all the designs have a different purpose. So, ultimately you want to generate both syngas and power out of it. So, now let us see the syngas which is generated, what are the uses of the syngas? So, you have the gasification. So, suppose you do the gasification here, coal gasification. You may either have coal or you can have steam. or you can add here air, air or oxygen whichever way. So, overall schematic, ultimately you are either adding steam, air or coal whatever. Huh? So, once you do that, so you can have several of the compounds, one is your town, this is called SNG or substitute natural gas or synthetic natural gas or town gas, means it is primarily methane, SNG means it is primarily methane. I will tell you what are the reactions. So, this can be used for let us say for uh, gas supply systems. In the municipalities, they use this as a gas supply systems mainly for heating. Let us say you want to heating heat the room during the uh, winter. So, you can use this synthetic natural gas or substitute natural gas. Both means the same. It is town gas primarily methane. So, it is the lower heating value or you can also get lean gas. Lean gas and town gas difference is when it is gas is the coal is gasified in the absence of oxygen, not exactly absence of oxygen, lesser oxygen. Then you have lean gas. Lean gas again as a gaseous effluent, but it may consist other than methane other compounds also. So, this lean gas can be combusted, this can be combustion, you can combust this lean gas, you can go for combustion and you can generate electricity. Okay. Then uh, you have, uh, you can add this if you want because you are having hydrogen. So, if you have hydrogen, you can either use in, in fuel cell or the hydrogen or hydrogen can be used in oil refinery. So, now oil refinery you know where it is used, it is used in hydro processing reaction, hydro processing. So, in the hydro processing uh, you must be knowing what are the reactions, hydro processing reactions let us say hydro treating, hydro cracking, hydro treating or hydro cracking, okay. these are the reactions. So, hydro cracking is to break them into compounds such that the unsaturated rings is not there while uh, your hydrotreating means you remove the heteroatom. Fuel cell obviously you must be aware it will give you electricity directly. So, you can use the fuel cell get the hydrogen from coal. Then the reducing gas you have the reducing gas. So, 
so it is a gas where you are using for ores and minerals in ores. So, you get suppose in this case you can get crude iron. So, it is a reducing environment, means that less of oxygen, more of hydrogen, reducing environment. Then finally, you have the syngas, you can also get syngas. So, if you have a mixture of CO and H2, so this will be taken up in detail. So, syngas you can use it in either IGCC integrated gas combined cycle integrated gas company for production of electricity or you can also use it for chemical industry as a precursor. So, you know you can prevent you can make uh, alkanes, alkenes, alcohols. You know because you can uh, combine carbon monoxide and hydrogen and make either alkanes, alkenes or alcohol that is called the Fischer Tropsch synthesis, FT synthesis. So, this is the application. So, you see now whether we are talking about fuel cell or we are hydrogen storage, energy storage, ultimately your primary source is coal. So, coal what you do? You gasify them, when you gasify them, you take the gases, take the heat, generate steam, either you generate the turbine you generate electricity or you use and you, you get syngas, you can use syngas for several purposes. So, these are the very useful the coal gasification that is why these are several and wide domain of usage. So, where are they use? First is let me explain one by one again what is a lean or synthetic gas natural gas. So, what is this lean or synthetic natural gas? It is something like that. So, you have this coal getting formed to a mixture of CO to H2 and finally to methane. So, this is also called as methanation reaction. In this methanation reaction what happens? You either combine carbon monoxide in hydrogen in a catalytic behavior, catalytic process to form methane or you can also add CO2 plus. If you have CO2 forming you can also convert them to methane. So, this is the methane. So, you are changing coal to the COH2 plus CO2, CO2 also you can do a methanation reaction to form methane. Then you have uh, you know these Fischer Tropsch type reaction, what are those? Suppose you have uh, you have uh, carbon n moles of carbon monoxide syngas and 2 n plus 1 moles of hydrogen. So, if you add them you will get alkanes Cn. H 2 n plus 2 plus n moles of H 2 O okay? n moles of H 2 O or you can convert them to alkenes also. So, if you have moles of this okay? this is alkenes or you can also convert them into alcohol. So, if suppose n moles combines with 2 n moles, so you have a stoichiometric of 1 is to 2 of carbon monoxide and hydrogen. In general, I can write a alcohol which is CH2 NOH plus n minus 1 H2O. So, see now you can see you are producing alkanes, alkenes, alcohols, these are the Fischer Tropsch reaction. Then you have the hydrogen production. Well, you must be knowing this hydrogen production. This is the water gas shift reaction CO plus H2O. You react with steam, it forms CO2 plus H2. So, you are producing hydrogen. So, you can separate out this is called the water gas shift reaction. Now, this water gas shift reaction is very uh, important reaction. For example, for this, if I want to see the rate constant, the rate constant is particularly high, you know. This is particularly high at low temperature. So, if I want to draw out the temperatures, it is around if I want to draw here and here about I am not showing this is 450 or let us suppose this is 800 Kelvin. So, this will go like this. So, lower the temperature more will be the water gas shift reaction. Okay. So, now this is the way you can apply this coal for the applications which is lean gas, raw material for chemical industry or hydrogen production. So, now there is one concept that 
ओके फाइन वी आर गेटिंग लीन गैस सब्सिड्यूट नेचुरल गैस फाइन बट कैन आई कन्वर्ट कोल्ड डायरेक्टली टू मीथेन दिस वॉज अ टॉपिक ऑफ रिसर्च लॉन्ग टाइम बैक बट इट एक्चुअली डी डेट फाउंड मच प्लेस बिकॉज पीपल वेर फाउंडिंग दिस यू नो दे फाउंड दिस नेचुरल गैस डिपॉजिट सो इफ द नेचुरल गैस डिपॉजिट वॉज ऑलरेडी अवेलेबल देन केम शेल गैस ऑल दिस डिपॉजिट वॉज अवेलेबल एंड दे बिकम चीप देन दे जस्ट द टेक्नोलॉजी वॉज नॉट टेकन अप फर्दर बट लेट एस लुक वॉट इज द रिएक्शन लुक लाइक सो दे मेड इज सच अ मैन दैट इट द एंटायर रिएक्शन इज ऑटोथर्मल सो द रिएक्शन इज सो ही आर कोल विल रिएक्ट विथ स्टीम to form methane plus CO2 the reaction looks very simple but it is not so so they tried this reaction because this delta h is around it is endothermic delta h is around at the temperature of around 800 this is endothermic 11.4 kilojoules per mole so they tried this reaction a company so uh, it was found that to be practically autothermal without the addition of oxygen so there is no oxygen according to thermodynamic data the optimal process parameters are relatively low temperature so you have a low temperature and a pressure depend on the temperature so let me just revisit the plot if you remember for coal classification if this is the temperature and if this is the composition of the gas if you recollect properly so i said that uh, when you have a normal case the methane selectivity goes like this at one bar okay but at a high pressure this will be shifting the methane selectivity will be shifting at 30 bars if you recall it so methane selectivity maxima is shifting as you increase temperature at higher temperature at higher pressure so that's why i've written according to the thermodynamic data the optimal process parameters are relatively low temperatures so if you have a low temperature you will have higher but then greater temperatures so for higher selectivity so this is the higher selectivity for higher selectivity you demand higher pressures but the issue with if i want to conduct at 30 bars the coal is not reactive so that's where the problem arose the process is based on the so what they did this company they developed this process where they used a catalyst high pressure and they recycled the produced hydrogen and carbon monoxide and then obtain methane so let us see the process flow sheet that you will come to know so you have a uh, the coal preparation here so you add coal feed here this is called blue gas only methane so you have the coal preparation coal preparation then what you do you add the recovered catalyst from the previous cycle recovered catalyst okay coal preparation and the recovered catalyst so then you put them into a gasification so you pro provide a gasification reaction where steam is reacting with the coal so here you have apply steam so this will get converted to methane and so you have what you do is the remaining so what will happen is you have the ash plus catalyst both you separate them so catalyst is so you send if i want to write here a so you send there the catalyst separate out air and recycle it back to the recovered catalyst section and send it to coal preparation while you gasify it obviously you will provide a gas so you clean up the gas you require a gas cleaning so you have the you, you know you have the syn gas coming out go ahead you separate the syn gas you get substitute syn gas sng and the remaining gases what you do you do a again send it back to the gasification remaining gases the unreacted gases so this is primarily the h2 and co recycle okay then what you do is uh, the remaining gases while you do a gas cleaning it will have sulfur in it because you are taking coal so you have the sulfur recovery unit sulfur recovery so you have sulfur here coming out elemental sulfur and you have co2 so you separate co2 and sulfur from the sulfur recovery unit 
So finally, this is the process what they have designed. So uh, this Exxon is initially did this work, but uh, they are now the technology is transferred to a a company known as Great Point Energy. This is the process they devised to the recycle of the fin gas to have higher and higher conversion, then cleaning of the gas and recover the sulfur also. So this is the way they did it, but ultimately as I told you because of the availability of natural gas, this fell through. Now let us see what we call as the integrated combined, integrated gasification combined cycle. So what happens here is you have sections, so if I want to show you, you have first the gasifier. So you need require oxygen, so you have the air separation unit air separation first unit. So you provide oxygen here and you provide pulverized coal. So if I write here pulverized coal, pulverized coal means you grind the coal into small particles that is called pulverized coal. Then you send it to the gasifier. So I will just make a general gasifier. So this is the liquid slag where it will be coming. So they are taking this entrained flow gasifier in this case, entrained So the temperature is around 800 Kelvin, 1800 Kelvin and the pressure is 30 bars, okay. So obviously the reaction occurs gasification occurs, you have the raw syn gas coming out, raw syn gas coming out, what you do is you go to a condenser, okay. So uh, what you do with this you generate, so if this is the condenser, so same thing you send boiler feed water. you generate high pressure steam, okay, HP steam because of the outlet. Now what you do the remaining, you know, the gases which are formed, you send it to a what you call as a cyclone, okay, you have to separate this, the cyclone is there, you separate out the particulate matter and uh, you will have the fly slag here or fly ash or fly slag, you must have heard these terms, fly slag. Uh, what you do, the, but still it is not enough, so you need to separate out the sulphur also from this. So you send it to this gas cleaning I will write. In the glass cleaning apparatus, so what you do is take this out, you get sulphur out of it elemental sulphur, gas cleaning, okay. So now after that, now what is issue is while you do this, uh, you also require some amount of air because there are some reactions occurring. So you have the sulphur compound like carbonyl sulphide or hydrogen sulphide. So this carbonyl sulphide and hydrogen sulphide needs to be converted to elemental sulphur, okay. So for that you require the air into for this reaction to occur. So what you do is there you take out the products and send it, you have to do the reactions, so to separate this, so you send the product to combustor, now in the combustor you require air, that is what I was telling, you require air, so you provide air from here, so it means it is providing air here, air. So you have the gas after cleaning getting entering into the combustor and uh, what you do after this and you also you need to you know you have to control the nitrogen also flow. Now why this nitrogen also sent? This is to alter the reaction because the flow of nitrogen and air you have to control in such a manner in this combustor 
you don't produce NOx too much. Ammonia is fine, ammonia can be easily removed, but NOx should not be high enough. So for that you send NOx, I mean you don't generate NOx here. So then what happens is you have the compressor here, then you have the turbine here and then you have the, so this is the compressor. you have the turbine and you have the generator. So when the combustion occurs, the gases are taken out and sent to the turbine, it actually then what it does, it the blades will rotate and it will also further again compress the air, it will uh, run this compressor because of the expansion or the revolving of this turbine. So, part of it is used for compressor work. So, the compressor work you get again you put air here okay, because you use that air and send it with the outlet stream coming from the gas clinic unit. So, you part of it is given to the energies to the compressor running the compressor, part of it is going to generator and this generator then generates the electricity. Okay. So then uh, from this section, so what are we getting is finally the exhaust gases. So the gases are then sent to a waste heat, we say the waste heat boiler. So once it is sent to the waste heat boiler, you have a exhaust gas coming out. exhaust gas coming out and the gases which are coming from let us say the high pressure steam, it will now further enter into another unit, but here you will not have any compressor, you will have simply a turbine and this turbine will drive a generator. So, it gives electricity. Okay. So, when the heat when it is low pressure steam, this steam is then again sent to this waste heat boiler. Okay. So, uh, this waste heat boiler again will take up the heat from the waste heat boiler, it will get heated up and this is then sent back to the initial stream. So, this is I would say this is the stream and dotted portion from this section. So, what are the things which you are getting electricity, exhaust gas and again electricity. So, these are again the compressor and the turbine coming out, the high pressure steam entering here, driving the turbine, generating the turbine, sorry generating the compressor or driving the turbine, I will say it is uh, opposite way out. This is the compressor, the turbine and the generator, it is not compressor is not there. So, I have made it a, this is the turbine this is the generator, the turbine is rotated and it generates the electricity. So, the stream, the high pressure steam which is low pressure steam enters the waste heat boiler, it takes up heat from the waste heat boiler, again gets heated up and it is sent back to the high pressure steam unit stream, this again keeps on going. So, this is one section, so this is the other section, here it is combusted, the remaining gases are combusted with air, so here the control of N21 air is such that you do not produce more of NOx, NOx remains down. Okay. So, this is the basically the integrated gasification combined cycle. So, let us revise what we have read, the traditional pulverized coal power plant, what happens? Steam is produced by exchanging heat between boiler feed water and the flue gas from a pulverized coal combustor, the first part. The gasifier, you have the flue gas coming from the top, so the steam is provided due to the exchange of the heat. Steam then drives the steam turbine which produces energy. For power generation, IGCC comprises of a coal gasifier and a combination of gas turbine and a steam turbine. So, you have seen the combination of gas turbine and steam turbine. So, shell thus we are what we are discussing is the develop of the gasifier, the shell have developed an oxygen blown dry fluid entrant flow gasifier for the coal gasification. The gasifier will obtain oxygen from the cryogenic air separation unit, you have noticed it is in the left hand side below. After passing through a gas cooler, the gas from the gasifier undergoes particle removal in a cyclone and candle filter. 
Gas is then transferred to a gas cleaning plant where sulfur compounds are transformed to sulfur and eliminated. Gas cleaning equipment consists of a COS hydrolysis and H2S absorption unit, a cloth plant and a gas saturated with a water purification system. So, what is the COS hydrolysis? So this reaction takes place, carbonyl sulphide will react with steam in this process to form H2S and CO2. Now, how does H2S get converted? That is the cloth plant. So, H2S reacts with oxygen and it forms elemental sulphur plus water. This is the way the reaction is proceed. The purified gas is delivered to the gas turbine where it is burned with the compressed air to produce a high temperature, high pressure gas steam. The gas will then expand and transfer energy to the turbine blades in order to rotate the shaft that drives both the compressor and the generator. Okay. So, if you remember you have this uh, compressor, then you have this generate, this is the compressor, turbine and then generator. So, these are in a way it is linked to each other this process, the compressor, turbine and generator. The gas turbine exhaust gases are directed to a waste heat boiler. So, I told you it comes gas with a waste heat boiler WHB which generates high pressure steam by exchanging heat with the boiler feed water. This steam is used to generate more electricity via the steam turbine which is the upper part portion which just now I discussed. So, there is some, what are the advantages? The advantages are it has a high energy efficiency, it has low environmental impact and it is ability to produce electricity as well as synthetic fuels and chemicals. It also has marketable byproducts products such as sulphur which is formed through polygeneration. So, what is this reaction? Overall process, you have coal here you do a gasification, do a gasification, you do gas cleaning, you get elemental sulphur, this is the example of polygeneration. So, I am making it a brief distinction. So, you get syngas after gas purification, you do a shift reactor where the water gas shift reaction takes place. From the shift reactor, you go for CO2 and H2 separation because you will be forming carbon dioxide and H2 separation. CO2 you can you send for storage, CO2 for storage. Now, this CO2 can be a useful source for producing, you know, if uh, we will be discussing later in module, last module for production of algae. So, it requires algae production. So, that can be a source for this and the hydrogen you can use in the combined cycle to produce power. So, then you have the syngas conversion, when you get the shift reactor you get syngas here. So, you come syngas conversion, you can do a syngas conversion, then you like fischer trofs process you get syngas chemicals or syngas derived chemicals I can say syngas. This is the way we call this polygeneration. You are generating chemicals, you are generating CO2, you are generating power. The SOX and NOX emissions from IGCC are significantly lower than those from pulverized coal comb systems because the reaction is something like this. You know, like this coal sulfur, the reaction, as I already told you, when I want to uh, take out this coal sulfur compounds are transformed to hydrogen sulfide. As I already told you, the reaction happening will be COS, H2O will give H2S and CO2. So, the issue with pulverized coal is during coal burning sulphur dioxide is produced. Now, this here sulphur dioxide is produced not hydrogen sulphide which must be removed from the stack gas by a process known as flue gas desulphurization. Okay. So, but the problem is this flue gas desulphurization becomes much more tougher because the gas flow is far more diluted and separation is less effective. So, there are three types of this coal plants if I want to compare this means subcritical pulverized coal, then you have the ultra subcritical pulverized coal and then you have IGCC the integrated okay, plant. So, most of them they are the efficiencies are the highest near about it is 
the efficiency is the highest and 54 percent efficiency near about it is predicted in, in 2020 54 percent this is ranging from 50 to 53 percent the different pressures they apply and this is 39 percent. So, most of the power plants are of the three types subcritical pulverized coal gasifier, ultra subcritical pulverized coal and IGCC. Then there is an important uh, thing which we will consider which is the acid gas removal. This is also one of the uh, example we should see. So, it is like uh, how you remove the acid that is H2S and CO2. So, for this you use a chemical compound called as alkanolamine. So, the CO2 and this H2S what they will do they will react with this alkanolamine and then while there is an absorption unit then is a regeneration unit. So, in the regeneration unit you pass steam you strip off this both CO2 and H2S hydrogen sulphide gases. So, let me make a small uh, schematic. So, you have a absorber unit this is the absorber. So, this is flue gas treatment. So, you have the flue gas coming out from here this is the feed gas. So, these are the trays. So, they are roughly around close to 20 to 24 trays. Okay. So, you get pure gas from the top. So, what they do is they will another have a regenerating section which is similar to the absorption section it will again as a trace 20 to 24 in number. So, what you do is that you provide steam here. So, you provide steam here and send it at the base and then the you send this feed at the top. So, once the entire alkanolamine line is stripped of the CO2 and the H2S you send this at the so, prior to sending it what you do is uh, you uh, you preheat you preheat with the incoming uh, you know here what is happening here is this stream will have alka no, plus H2S plus CO2 in it or CO2 or COS whatever it is huh? CO2 or COS in it. So, when you do that you preheat this from the so, this will be only alkalinomine. So, it is stripped off with the steam getting sent here, it is stripped off the H2S and other gases. So, the other gases which are stripped off, they will be sent, they will be condensed and you take out H2S and okay. And then again you send it back to this. So, now the temperature head is different. So, in this case for the absorber you operate at uh, lower temperature and this regenerator you operate at a 385 Kelvin. So, this steam is sent to strip off the H2S and CO2 from the alkalinomine solution. So, here you have the pure alkalinomine and here what you have is, so it is a counter current operation. So, whatever you have uh, you have taken up from the chemical reaction you take it out and send it at the top of the regenerator. So, this is the regenerator. So, this is the stream which is coming from the absorber with H2S and CO2 it is getting stripped off and coming down getting preheated the pure alkaline preheated again it is sent back at the top of the absorber column. This is the way you do a acid gas removal. Acid gas primarily refers to this H2S and CO2 stream. So, during the gasification now, the issue is you have these both nitrogen and ammonia getting produced. So, nitrogen even though it is produced not a problem because it is non hazardous and ammonia is easier to extract of syngas than NOx from the stack gases of a coal combustor. So, this can be done using a selective catalytic reduction. So, in this selective catalytic reaction what happens is you have this nitrous oxide let us suppose nitrogen oxide you have ammonia let us say you have ammonia you oxidize them you have need a catalyst for this you produce nitrogen and water these are balanced or you may have NO2 also coming out these are NOx coming out. So, you have a so you use ammonia and oxygen and a specific catalyst to convert them to nitrogen and water. So, this is the way you actually hold it for the 
selective catalytic reduction. So, you use a particular catalyst. So, that is why it is easier. The NOx production, NOx is produced even if it is produced in a lesser amount, but its concentration can be reduced to an acceptable level by dilution with nitrogen from the air separation plant. If you recall in the flow chart, the, you have this control of nitrogen. You send it to nitrogen to the combustor, so we can control the production of NOx so that even ammonia is produced. So, the carbon capture storage this must be implemented if even if there is lower amount of hazardous emission from the gasification. That is the reason why you always gasify not burn because once you burn you have more and more amount of these gases, flue gases coming out. So, the removal of this flue gases takes is very expensive. So, I include this module. So, please follow this particular textbook where you have the detailed discussion regarding the flow sheet and also read the integrated gas, integrated gas this cycle, integrated gas cycle and uh, go through the examples of the gasifier. Thank you. Thank you.